My name is Mike Shaw. I am a horse behaviorist. I work with all types of different horses. We modifying bad learned behavior into good learned behavior. When people ask me what horse whispering is, uh, I kind of I giggle a bit because it's not a thing where you're going like, oh, come boy, let's go do it. You know, it's, it's very different. So it's a horse behaviorist is how I like to call myself. We basically take a horse that has some sort of issue, whether it be a desensitizing problem or a you know, a, an, a trauma, an unresolved trauma that's happened at the starting stalls or in a horse box or transport or whatever, even riding at the track. Um, and we try and modify or recorrect that behavior into good learned behavior. So as, as an entirety, we fix problem horses. So we start, we start from the ground. We start with creating a bond, creating some sort of trust with the horse in question. We start, I do a, a paddock session, which you, you, you'll see a bit later that where it's like an assessment to see how flighty, how sensitive, what the horse needs, what is its problems. And then from there, we build the relationship together to be able to get to the envisioned future of this, this package of a horse that behaves well, is easily manageable, and I can then, I and other people around who, who deal with the horse can control the horse in any situation. Yeah. At the moment we're walking, working on this little filly, we'll call her Diamond. Just getting her to understand what I'm asking her to do. She's very nervous, we're going to do a bit of desensitizing all around her body, the touch, the sound, and we'll see how we go from there. We've we've got to a place where I'm, she, I, I want to get her to be able to move her feet wherever I ask her to move her feet. If I want her to turn around and go with me and turn her shoulders with me, I want her to do that. And the other way, I want her to do the same thing. So I want her head following me all the time um, because I want, to, I want to show that I'm in control and, and that will help us when it comes to pressure situations. I'm going to use a stick as a pressure point. I'm pretty much going to lift, lift the stick up and ask her to move. I haven't even touched her with the stick yet. And I'm just guiding her with my left hand to get her to understand. It's very new, so I don't want to put too much pressure on. Just getting her to move forward away from the stick. Okay, and if she doesn't, we'll bring her back. We'll introduce it on the other side. Again, the pressure, pressure release principle. So I'm asking, putting pressure with the stick. I haven't touched her, just brought it close. She's moving away from the stick. I won't touch her if she keeps moving away. Then I'll drop the stick and let her stand still. And the licking and chewing is nice and important. That's an important sign for me. Uh, I go on the licking and chewing as sort of like an acceptance or an understanding or a start, start on that process. When the pressure is away, then she can stand still. So now there's no pressure on. No pressure on the halter. I've got no pressure on the stick and that's cool. This is where I want her to be. So I wanted to be able to stand still. There we go. Thanks for that. I don't do too many carrots and rewards in that sense. My rewards and what I've been taught is the release of pressure and just positive reinforcement, the touch, right? So I enjoy that. It also helps with the join up. When I've brought a horse and I've brought in something new to maybe desensitize a horse and to form a new association, it can get a bit, a bit scary and it, the fear can creep in into a horse and that's where the flight or the fight response or the freeze response might come in. And the, when I take the pressure away and I'm then able to touch, I think that is a positive reinforcement. And just to show that closeness, because I mean, horses are really amazing animals and they will really, really see right through your soul. And if I'm there, if I'm there showing up as a willing, trustworthy and loyal person to the horse, they'll feel that. And I think positive reinforcement is always good. Patience um, and understanding of horse behavior, which is just reading the head, reading the tail, reading the legs. Um, how the cues come from the horse in terms of it's licking and chewing or, or like big sighing, um, the snorting sometimes that happens. So yeah, patience, understanding, and a willingness to, a willingness to be put through your paces, I think. Um, horses are a very 
leveling and humbling creatures. Being willing to be humbled is also, I think, an important part of being a horse behaviorist.